Played named Charlie Hunter. Yes. Man. Yeah. yeah I, Seven string. Yeah, I, I used to listen to him a ton growing up, and I mean, obviously, I could never figure out how he, he is doing it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think his brain is split in half. But, yeah. Yeah. Kind of amazing. Yeah. I just his his idea of of that kind of kind of groove thing with the thumb was always really I was really always digging that. I see. Yeah. Sweet. 
<laughs> yeah, fellas. Yeah, that was fun. Hey, heck yeah. Wow. Party on, Wayne. I love it. That it's was like, fun. Just come along for the ride. It's like, <laughs> Great, this rhythm groove, and then yeah, it's just so deep. It's and amazing. I even noticed, I'm sorry, <clears throat> that when you oh, solo, you actually kind of stretch it back by choice a little bit sometimes. That must be because of the people that you work with. I say, just... Yeah, maybe it's a Texas thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. everybody in Dallas is seeing how far behind the beat they can yeah. play compared to the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's just a, I yeah. guess I'm a product of my of my environment, I guess. But thank you. But Snarky Puppy is an amazing band. How much time do you spend with them these days? Well, this year has been a little bit lighter for me just because of some other gigs I've had, and then and we had a kid, so you know, babies and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Um. So so I had to kind of take some time to to, to do that. So day or two. Oh man, it's, it's a joy. I, man, it's right. it's a whole other thing, dude. It's tell nice. you. I'm we're happy for you. Very Thank very happy. Yeah. yeah. So the band is always doing stuff. Yeah. But there's there's two other guitar players in the group, and we kind of rotate wow. around. Yeah. Uh, Bob Lenz, Eddie, and Chris McQueen are the two other two other guys, and so um, we kind of like share the gig, sort of. Like yeah. we all record together. Okay. Yeah. For the for this in the studio, but then when it's time to tour, it's kind of like, well, hey man, you know. Why don't you take this two weeks? I'll take the next two weeks. Oh, oh that's so cool! Yeah, yeah. Sort yeah. Of thing. So, yeah. so it's more like a collective of yeah, of yeah. Musicians. I mean, well, we we liken it to like a baseball roster. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, yeah. I always, I'm kind of like the, the the closer of the pitchers. Like I always tend to do like the last couple weeks of tours for some reason. So so th so this year was a little bit lighter for me. Next year will probably be mm, potentially light, and then I think 2019 we're supposed to like just really hit it hard. So so everybody's kind of doing their own projects <coughs> right now and. Branching out and just you know seeing the world via guitar. Yeah, yeah. your 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 baritone films are so they just light me up. Oh, thank I you. I mean, man. it's like I, a lot. Of, I'm not unique in that. I mean, everybody well, loves sure. them, but it's yeah, keep doing those. Oh, we'll do. I know thank it's hard. You. The social media thing is hard to keep up. It's isn't it? it's almost like a full time job, yeah. man. And I think yeah, I'm yeah. doing a lot, and then I and then I'm like, there are people that do this all yeah. the time, and I yeah. can't keep yeah. up. Yeah, and, but you know, but I just took a month off. I mean, I was in Japan for a yeah. month. I just got yeah. back sure. yesterday. So just some Instagram from you. Instagram and yeah. no YouTube. I just yeah. was like, yeah. I I just was like, I'm just gonna turn this off. Yeah, and yeah, just man. Kind of think yeah. about other things. Now I'm I'm actually really fired up to do some more now because I took a month off. But yeah, it's an right. animal that just yeah. kind of right. You have a gig tonight at the Baked Potato. Yeah, we're at the Spud, as the locals call it's it. Amazing. Yeah. So um, Josh yeah, Smith, right? Josh Smith and uh, and his crew. I think Gary Novak's on drums and Travis Great. Carlton. So Great. oh boy, a bunch yeah. of hacks. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited because you know Josh has been a good friend for a while. So it's always yeah. great to see him play and hear those guys. And, and my trio's here with me. And uh, yeah, so the Potato, you know, it's kind of a we were saying it's sort of a bucket list bucket venue for, for yeah. me because all of my yeah. favorite players have gone through there at one point. So, so will this be your first gig there? It's my first time. Ah, uh, how yeah, exciting. Yeah, I know, awesome. man. Yeah, it's, like, awesome. it's really small. I'm like, dude, it sure I'll, is. I'll I'll play in a bathroom. <laughs> <Okay. right now." laughs> I love that. I love yeah. the places in LA because LA is such a transient city, but I love the places like the, the Big Potato, still the Rainbow, still there. Like, yeah. there's certain things yeah. that have just yeah. been the same since it's I arrived stayed. here, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's a lot of DIY for you. And this tour, he was telling me, He's road managing it himself. Oh wow! So when you're yeah, doing yeah, your man, own, we have, yeah. A, yeah. we have a van. Yeah. We put the gear in the back of the van. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. we I do the hotels. I do the merch myself. I wow. do just about everything aside for now. Finally, I, yeah, I have a booking agent that's helping me get the actual gigs. Because yeah. prior to that, I mean, booking your own tour is just like right. I don't know if I wish that on my own enemy. It's like I'd rather spend a day at the dentist or something. Right. <laughs> <for> several days. <laughs> but you know, I, the, I've kind of come from that. You know, and like we're Snarky Puppy started out doing that when we were in college. Just yeah. Now you guys all met in college then, right? They yeah, we did. They um, I joined the band about four years into it already. Okay. And so, but so the band I think started in like 2004. Right. And so like I joined around 08, 09, and then um. But yeah, it's always kind. Of, it's always like always DIY, always yeah. indie, always. Hey, do you got my band's in town? Do you have a floor? Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. Can sleep on. Oh, so great, Mark. But you know, we were just we love the music. Yeah. We love the music. And we love playing yeah. with, with each other. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's a yeah, it's a sacrifice totally. But yeah. what you guys yeah. have done, I mean, you've got, you've won like three Grammys, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Which is just like it's you know, nice. you've taken this band that's a very unique, you know, for obviously and stretching kind of form of music yeah you know, and done this unique. kind of collective arrangement of musicians and you're doing what you want to do yeah. 
it's kind of the, everybody's ideal. It's like, well, we're not going to compromise. We're going to play the music we want to play, right? I mean, I'm blown away by that. Oh, thanks, man. Done. I mean, and I think kind of we are too a little bit just because, you know, you never know with, with, with music like that if people are going to pick up on it. And, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a unique sound. But I think at the end of the day, it's like people always want to hear musicians just playing great stuff and going for it, you know? Yeah. And, and challenging themselves maybe like on stage mm -hmm. and that kind of thing and, and so it's become um, Snarky Puppy was always kind of the band that I kind of wish was around when I was in high school amazing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. what a way to put it like yeah. let's make the band yeah. that we wish yeah. you know like I, I would have been a fan of us which sounds really silly but I, it doesn't you know what I mean like yeah um to me, it's like weather it's report, weather report at its peak for me. Yeah, sure. That's the kind of vibe I get from you guys. I mean, it's tasteful, it's compositional, but you guys are really, really playing. Sure. And yeah. there was always an audience for the Grateful Dead for Dave yeah. Matthews, and you kind of there was kind of a vacuum there. You kind of were at the right place at the right time. Yeah, we you, you know, worked that, hard for it, but there is kind of like that jam band community that's embraced us. But then there's like <clears throat> kind of even the jazz community that's really embraced yeah. us as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, at least people that are okay with it not just being traditional kind of you know that kind of thing because we definitely are not traditional jazz in any yeah. sense of the world a lot of but great r and isms there's an r and there's yeah, a big thing. r and b influence yeah. and so we've kind yeah. of definitely gravitated towards that audience as well in the gospel community and hip-hop and things like that so it's it's a yeah it's an interesting band because it's like a band of producers and band leaders so there's so much influence you awesome. know <laughs> and everyone's able to write in the band the, pri the primary yeah. Guy is the bass player, Michael Lee, who writes most of the yeah. tunes, but everybody is able to bring in songs and help arrange, yeah. and, and so it it's like a 15-headed monster. You know, Michael's the leader, and at the end of the day, what he says yeah. is probably going to be what happens, yeah. but right. that's not to say we are not able to change his mind on occasion. And, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but no, we'll figure out a way to make it work, I guess. I, I wrote a, uh, my premier guitar article this past month on, um, is, it was a, 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 inspired by a blog piece that I saw online that somebody had written about, like, is rock guitar eating itself? And it was mm. all about um, influences in rock music. And um, I, got, I got really into this, this guy's, you know, his, his blog, because basically it was saying, like, you know, when you, when you ask young rock bands these days, and I mean kind of traditional rock and roll sounding bands, you know, what are their influences? And it's like, well, ACDC and Guns N' Roses and Led Zeppelin and this kind of thing, and it's kind of a small pool of influences that I feel like maybe people have drawn on it. And so rock has, maybe that's stagnated uh, the, the genre a little bit, because back in the day, it used to be you'd ask Tony Iommi from Sabbath, you know, what he thought about stuff, and he'd be, well, I like Hank Marvin, and I like mm, this, and yeah. I, or, you know, you think about Paul McCartney yeah. and the vaudeville kind of influence yeah. in his music. and yeah. So drawing it around to you guys, I mean, when you say, like, you know, the traditional jazz people might, you know, as long as they're okay with, you know, it sounds like you're bringing a whole bunch of influences in and you've created, like you say, it's like a 15 head monster, but like, let's just be really good, pull from a whole bunch of influences and do something completely that's us and uncompromising. Sure. You know, so in your genre, I feel like that's really, it's, it's probably been a great thing for jazz, I would think. Yeah, and, and I'm sure you're giving so many musicians hope because if you guys yeah. can go out and succeed, Others can too. Sure. At playing music, yeah. just music. Yeah. Right. Just music for well, its own sake. Like whatever yeah. the stuff. Yeah. 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 And that's what we've learned. You know, it's like, and we were just talking about social media and all that. It's like, man, you can reach people. Right. Just right. give them what, give them what you have, and if they're into it, great. Yeah. But be you authentic. Can reach them. Yeah. So be authentic. So you don't, you yeah. know, I think you don't yeah. have to necessarily feel like you need to conform to anything or whatever. Just do what right. you want, and and you can reach people. There's seven billion humans on planet Earth. Right. Someone will dig your stuff. <laughs> and is it, well, if you're doing it on a very high level, like you guys are, I totally think that in your case in point, you know, a perfect example, you know, of it, it, it's, you're, you're absolutely right, you these, do these great videos on Instagram and, and like, what you know, where you're just sitting there playing and it just pulls you in, right? You, yeah. You want to yeah. watch. Yeah. You know, when you're playing on a high level, I believe people want quality. Totally, man. You know, they really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you dying to do your trio all the time? Are you dying to... I mean, to... right now, that's kind of where my head is. Um... Because as a as a composer, I feel like I write better in sort of a guitar oriented yeah. concept. Writing for yeah. Snarky Puppy is hard yeah. for me. Right. I've come yeah. up with one song at yeah. this point, yeah. <laughs> and that right. you know kind of took a lot out of me. Um, so yeah, so my head is kind of in the trio, small small band kind of guitar based format. You know, I, I grew up loving Jeff Beck and yeah, and right. John Schofield yeah. and Wayne Krantz and yeah. these kind of like blues oriented fusion kind of guys and. And that's just what happens when I write tunes. You know, the tunes that I come up with are very actually 
they have like pop forms if you kind of really listen to them. Okay. But we yeah. sort of extend that. Yeah. So right. Um, you know, you'll always know if you're in the verse or the chorus. It just might feel a little weird. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you know, we we stretch out. You know, because the the guys I play with all have the kind of backgrounds in in jazz and fusion and, and improvisational music. Yeah. So uh, it's all about like pushing it to the end of explosion and then just kind of pulling it back like yeah. a couple of clicks and but we live right there on the edge I guess. Yeah. Awesome. And how long is your set? How long do you like to? Um, an hour, hour and a half. What do you like? You know, What's it's your funny. Favorite? My my, I was talking to my bass player yesterday, and he was like, "Man, I don't really even, I don't really even feel like we get into anything until like after an hour." <laughs> man. Like, I'm totally done. We play like two hours, like whatever you want. You know, he's like a total <laughs> yeah, yeah, groove all day. Yeah, and and you know, I'm very much like, "Thank you, good night." <laughs> you know? That was enough. <laughs> yeah, so I'm okay with an hour, but I yeah. think we have. I think we actually might be contracted to do a couple nineties on this on yeah. this tour, which is yeah. cool. Stretch yeah. it out. Stretch you know, it. I out. have enough material now, yeah. which. You know, a couple of years ago it was like that. I couldn't do that. Right. But I have three albums now to my name, so if we have to play, if we have to dig deep into the A, B, and C sides, we could do it. Int- uh, how do you uh, approach um, playing in Snarky Puppy, like with the the guitars you choose and the stuff that you know, the the rig you're choosing and yeah. stuff, and then going to the trio? Do you feel That's like awesome you have question. to fill up a way different space? Like, um, here's the cool thing about being a guitar player in Snarky Puppy is that the three of us have completely different sounds and mm. styles and gear and that's the point so like actually the stuff I bring to a snarky puppy session is going to be the same stuff I play with a trio because okay. it's just me yeah, cool. you yeah. know and yeah. same for the other two fellas yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. you know it, in the studio obviously anything goes and we're bringing in all kinds of play baritone guitars you know yeah. Um, yeah. but my rig has pretty much been the same the same I style of rig a uh, couple overdrives a few um Delays, modulations, reverbs, and then like a really clean, loud combo amp. So you or set the amp. Cap. You set the amp basically pretty clean. That's yeah, kind of what I do yeah. too. Is oh, I set it clean and then yeah. I depend on the pedals live. About as live. loud as yeah. I can get it yeah. without yeah. breaking up too much and you know pissing off everybody on stage. Because uh, with, with Snarky, its volume is is an issue because there's obviously so many people and you have yeah. to yeah. have. Yeah. So like we learned very early on that like you know four twelve cabs are not going to work yeah, in that band. So yeah. we do. We use a lot of the Supro gear, oh, cool. uh, yeah, which is which is really great stuff because they they cut really well, they sound great, they and they take pedals fantastically. Mm. So that's kind of been that's the one thing that the three guitar players we all have in common is kind of like a nice big fat clean tone, makes and sense. then we just makes tweak sense. with pedals. Yeah. So we all have our favorite yeah. overdrives and and you know different things. I I think I'm more like the straight up the middle kind of tone guy. The other fellows are real into soundscapes and kind oh. of. Interest yeah. more uh, wackier sounds and yeah. things like that. I'm, you know, it was like one of the times I thought I actually sounded the best was when my luggage was lost and my pedal board was in transit to Paris. Uh. And I had to play three or four gigs with my Grosh Strat uh, into a little memory man, memory toy. Right. Electri- the, not even the man. It was the toy. The memory toy. The little the, guy. The wee guy. Yeah. Uh, into a Fender Deville 212 with the overdrive channel. Ah, and it was. I mean, talk about it's like, brother, you better, you better play, because <laughs> yeah. you, you know this is yeah. what you got. It's what you yeah. got, and yeah. and, uh, and you know, everybody's like, man, like, you sound really great tonight. You know, I'm like, thanks. I've had no hang idea. on for dear life. I don't even, <laughs> I'm so not used to not have you know, because we get our our little our boards that have the things that we think we really rely on and, and become a part of our sound. And there are some pedals that I would like are like desert island for me, but. Every now and then, you know, you get your suitcase lost and see yeah. what you can really do. It's kind of cool yes. in a way, right? Because it's like, well, all bets are off. I've just got to, and you, you play some sound and then you play differently. It's sure. like something will come it out. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. It brings out a different side to your plan, for yeah. sure. Well, for me, I'm, I'm into reverb and tremolo and mm-hmm. a natural sounding overdrive and a little delay that maybe you don't hear the trail. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, and then an amp that's set half clean okay. and just relying on the pedals. That's live. Sure. You know, here it's different. Yeah, you use sure. anything you want. And that's what you're saying about the studio. You bring in just whatever you want. Yeah, you get it. weird. Totally. Yeah. 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 But that, I mean, those are the kind of the essentials, though, I would, I would think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I, I swore off reverb for a really long time just because <clears throat> I wanted to kind of, like, see about my time feel. 
you know? But That paid off. I don't... Well, I mean... <laughs> right. I, but now I love reverb again, so it's... Everybody loves yeah, reverb, and I do too. It's so good, and I was yeah. like, why did I wait? Yeah. Why did I do that, yeah. you know, so... It's come... Reverb's made a big comeback. Nice. Yeah, so nice. I, I ain't mad at it. I, yeah. now, now that's one of those things that, like, I have to kind of have... A little know, bit, A little yeah. bit, which feels really good. Yeah. But don't change anything. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, well, it was partially swearing off reverb, and it was partially because I had a fender that the, the damn reverb tank kept breaking. Ah. And so there were times when it was just not going to work. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so no reverb because it wasn't working. When I was 17, I used to depend on a Univox fuzz for all my leads, and mm. it broke one night, and I realized I wasn't really playing well enough. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, how do I get this to sustain? I gotta bend it all the way up. <laughs> I, it's not, there's no sustain. What? Uh, uh, yep. Good lesson. Yep. Yes. Yeah, sometimes it's good <laughs> to just play nice. clean and be like, here it is, yeah. right? Like, right? So if you guys practice at home, I'm always interested in this. Do y'all plug in or do you ever just play your electric guitar acoustically? You first. You know, I, I recently realized that like on the road, I've never had like a like a little amp th set up, something to use in yeah. the room or whatever, you know. So I would always just play acoustically, but I don't find it very inspiring, you know. Sure. And I saw uh, these great, you know, Phil X puts up these great yeah, hotel room hilarious. videos. Yeah. yeah, so funny. And so, and in this video, he's got this little uh, mini Black Star battery powered amp, and it sounded pretty great. So I went and bought one in Japan, and I played more in the room than I have in a lot. Yeah, awesome. it was just uh, it's like, oh god, this is. I need to have. A Something. little bit of sound, yeah. yeah. So and that little, even that little battery powered amp, I'm like, this like seventy five bucks. Like this is going to be a great investment for hotel rooms. Yeah. It sounds pretty good. It's like yeah. got to weigh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, effects. Yeah. It's I think for me, I'm if I don't plug into an app, I'm likely to develop a bad habit. Okay. Mm. So because I want to, I want to know the the touch sensitivity that's happening with yeah. an amplified sound. Yeah. Uh, but when I was younger, I played constantly without an amp. Yeah. And traveling mm. constantly didn't matter. Yeah. Constantly. So I guess it's okay. But these days, I really want to hear how I'm relating to you know the touch and make sure that that you know I'm point. playing hard at the right time and soft at the right time. I just yeah. find it's way more enjoyable too. Yeah. 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 Having yeah. that, it's like I'll yeah. I'll just yeah. actually play longer. Right. You know, and then there. how about you? Well, I have a weird habit of like yeah, either just playing a long time without plugging in anything mm. or. And this is going to be so you guys are going to think I'm crazy. Plugging into an amp and then putting on headphones, mm -hmm. but not actually having anything come through the headphones. Okay. So it's just like, it's just like a damper on your own sound. But for some That's reason, it really feels interesting. Kind of cool because it's not so immediate. We got to try that. That's cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, I don't. Yeah. It's, I guess it's like having like a s amazing compressor or something, like, or, or mm -hmm. a really weird sounding compressor. Yeah. But it like, it, for some reason, for me, it like takes away the initial like thing of the note which I guess makes me feel self-conscious or something so yeah having that kind of like have you ever done a tour on in-ear monitors yes and did that was that really hard it because took a of couple, that? it took gigs to get to it yeah you know? that's the, um, I it's find not it's, my favorite way to play ugh, to be yeah, honest hard. I really don't like it because hmm. I don't like I mean it's like yeah, I like hearing myself but I but not that much <laughs> yeah yeah and it's too small really right it's right it's like the pinpoint thing <laughs> yeah, yeah right oh, yeah. it's like Everything yeah. you do yeah. is that note even is if, yeah. in your brain. Yeah, it's even not how you imagined it. Yeah, right. <laughs>
Yeah, so that lick, that descending lick, do you even remember what that was when Pete started to shriek? Um, <laughs> well, I think it was some triplets. Triplets. So, um, pentatonic y, but I guess you could, you know. So, like one, two, this is not going to be verbatim, three. Uh, how was I? Okay. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I can't do it that fast. Well, here, so. Okay. Yeah. That was the first phrase. It's the same phrase, yeah, so. All right. And then. Which is nice because it's just simple. Yeah, it's a super pattern, pattern based. Um, if you then decide if you want to finish it that way. <laughs> So wait, well, <laughs> you don't have to play it so fast. <laughs> That's that's so the that's double, the, double yeah. that's the sucky part. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that's a trick. That's cool though. Very cool. Yeah, however you want to make it yours. So, so yeah, so like in the groove, you know. Ah, see, I can't even do it. You know, but, but the idea. So let me call attention to something you just sure. did. You just change the pocket. That's one of the things I love about his playing is that he creates these different pockets at different times. So yeah, so that would be kind of like a that's a that's a I don't know if that's like a neo soul thing or a Dallas thing or like a some cool. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, but um, yeah. So yeah. Well, just the fact that it pops out and you do it in you know in context with all these other so things. back and almost yeah. like a yeah uh, so you can, you can combine the two ideas like Love bass players, don't I you? Do. <laughs> yeah. And I, I point out you're constantly tapping your foot too, and I noticed yeah. this right when you started playing today that you, you seem to always have that internal clock. Well, I, I even when I you're try to, yeah, and I, I think for me, a lot of the time, you know, when I'm trying to phrase at least, like if I get lost harmonically or melodically, I can always at least try to do something interesting rhythmically, maybe. Uh huh. Um, which is kind of a um, Consciously, something I think about just because a lot of my favorite improvisers are really rhythmic improvisers. You cool. Know? Yeah. And so that's, um, I, I did a really silly little column for, I think it was for Premier Guitar actually, called Solos You Can Dance To. Oh, cool. And, uh, and I kind of sort of broke down that concept a little bit about like, imp you know, putting in different feels, <clears throat> like superimposing different feels on top of grooves in your lead lines. Um, you know, like you can almost like, Put in a shuffle over some stuff, even if it's not really a shuffle. Like if you were just doing. Ah, uh, let's do. Can we do something maybe a little faster? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. if you know, okay. Yeah. So Prince is one of my favorite players ever in life. Yeah. Um, so if you were almost like doing like a static Prince thing, like I don't know, heck, like controversy or something like in B in F, you know. Like,
So like, you know, so the time is here, right? Well, if I want to, so if I'm soloing, you know, I put a shovel. But it's still Minneapolis, right? So it's like... So this is our groove, right? So you can kind of like, it's, you're not really playing with time, you're just playing with feel. Mm. Like you're, or not, not playing, but like screwing with it, <laughs> for lack of a better word. There's some amazing things you were doing there harmonically. Oh, well too. It's just thanks. Well, I, yeah. So these are like, I call these the Stevie Wonder chords, because really that's, you know, like, um, uh, there's, it's in F sharp. Um, Living for the city. Of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. just, that, that's essentially his voicings. So it's a F sharp minor triad, A flat minor triad, and A minor triad. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, I love throwing in chords and, and how I, you know, when I solo or whatever. And then I was just kind of like fooling around with the melodic minor scale a little bit, you know. Yeah, so, so like, we're in F sharp and you're We're in F sharp and I'm yeah. thinking F sharp melodic minor. Yeah. So for those that haven't tried melodic, melodic minor before, melodic minor. So, melodic minor is kind of like we joke about it as like the sound of jazz. <laughs> but um, it's got a major third and a or a minor third and a major seven okay. and a natural six. So um, so yeah. So like one, two, three. Five, major six, major seven, right? Minor thirds. So you have you have all these lovely, <laughs> all these lovely intervals. Um, Very cool. And it's a nice thing to kind of like, you know, I'm no master at it at all, but it's a nice thing to kind of throw in your playing to kind of just spice up a few lines. Yeah, and right. and Simple the cool too. thing sure, is that it it almost looks like a Dorian scale. Yeah. So if you're familiar with that box, right? You know. So yeah, if we're still in that sharp. Uh huh. So that's, and then, you know, you can, then there's like the modes of melodic minor, which I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Uh -huh. um, well, that, that'll help me for the next few years. That. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, you know, it's it's a combination of, of, of a few like outside sounds, but then I try yeah. to try to do stuff rhythmically that I, I think is, is... One of the things I've been thinking about lately is that uh, as musicians, we uh, we try and show off a lot. But and then I think about <laughs> at, what's your value as a musician as far as people seeking you to work on their music? And you spent a month in Japan with an artist who chose you, mm. and then Snarky Puppy chooses you to play and fit into their music. And mm -hmm. that's something that <clears throat> your rhythm playing is so strong, I mean, it it's going to draw people to seek you to be part of their music. And I don't think that's talked about enough. As a musician, mm -hmm. what do you do that 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 makes people seek you? Well, as, I mean, you made an excellent point. With everything you're doing right now, you, you will change the sound of a band, right? Right. Like you'll drive that yeah. music in yeah. a direction that's very yeah. uniquely you, and mm -hmm. it's something very special that... You know that what you 
And particularly in hip hop, you must get a lot of sessions from. Um, it's, it's sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I I did the Erica Badu gig for several years, and yeah. so that was mm. kind of you know the yeah. soul thing. And, um, yeah, but then with with hip hop guitar playing, it's interesting because a lot of times they almost want me to play stuff that you wouldn't think would be in hip hop. Really? Um, right. You know, I end up doing a lot of textural stuff, oh, and weird okay. sounds, and, and, <laughs> and you know, just yeah. things that you wouldn't right. normally associate. Yeah. But but that's cool. That's kind of the way that the music is going these days. But a lot of times, what I'll do is try to make myself sound like a sample. Okay. So, like, if I wanted to take like a, well, heck, we can just play that same. Let's do that same progression, just slower. So, like, so we're just F sharp, right? And then I would do maybe something like this. It's like that's amazing. Very you cool. cut off every note, but yeah. then you slowly kind of bring it right behind the beat. Yeah. And if you listen to a lot of like, uh, there's this really great producer named Jay Dilla who passed away several years, but he he has these guitar parts that are all sampled, and they cut off in really weird ways. And but it's a neat thing to study. I mean, that could be a hook, you know, what you're doing right now. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like variations on F sharp minor voicings. But with the technique that added that you're doing with the mutes and stuff, it's yeah, so very neat. So, man, I mean, there's so many great guitar players here in LA doing that kind of stuff, like the kind of gospel. Yeah. Sort of scene. Uh, That's yeah. where I get a lot of yeah. these voicings from, yeah. you know. So maybe we can ask you one thing about like the the kind of the finger style stuff you're Absolutely. doing, switching between pick yeah. and you know we could get a little bit because you started out doing that with the baritone. It was so amazing sounding. Thanks, um, man. But just your approach to kind of like yeah, you've got this great rhythmic thing that you do, sort of with your thumb and then. Well, it came from a few places. Uh, one out of necessity because when I was in high school, uh -huh. I would stay afterwards. Uh, after jazz band practice, and uh, the bass player would always go home, so it was just me and the drummer. Right, okay, and amazing. We had to figure. And I was like, "Man, don't you want to come hang out?" He's like, "No, I have, you know, debate team or whatever." <laughs> I had track practice, so I had like an hour in between, you know, jazz band and track, so I would just stay on campus. And, but but the bass player would go home, and uh, but the drummer and I like playing together, so I was like, "Well, we should at least just." Makes music, so I had right. to kind of comp for myself in a sense, and then I got hip to that guy I was telling you about, Charlie Hunter. Charlie Hunter, yeah. Um, seven, eight string, just jazz mm -hmm. funk master, yeah. And and really kind of absorbed his records, and obviously could never do what he was doing, but that sort of self accompaniment kind of idea really really resonated with me. And so it's 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 a lot of kind of percussive stuff, but not overly percussive. It's it's more just percussive in a sense that it helps me keep time. Mm. But if I were to take a, a very simple chord. Um, take like an A minor chord, but I'm only going to play three notes out of it, A, G, and C. And so it's basically just, here's your left hand of the piano, or I mean the right hand of the piano, and here's the left hand of the piano. So if you were to think of like a clavinet part on a Stevie thing. So it's... Shortness of the notes too. Yeah, is there's really and a big part. I've got my right hand back here, pretty pretty stoutly to mute it. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you know, you can like go. In, you know. I 
like those chords a lot. Uh. country in there too. Wow, that was amazing. In Texas, yeah. but yeah. Um, so if yeah, you, can I've you just slow doing that it a long down? Time. Sure. Just a little bit, just kind of what like adding the extra stuff that you did. Okay. Oh, that that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a straight up Minneapolis, Minneapolis. That's not a word. Minneapolis <laughs> um, way of Prince kind of playing a, the blues shape that we all know and love, right? Yeah. But he lets that oh. minor third hang out. Is such a great sound, right? Yeah. Why didn't I even know that? I don't know. So two downbeats. Yeah, so and the up the up beat is super short. Upbeat. So one. Yes. Exactly. And then you know you can throw in uh, the other famous Prince chords. You know, the minor six, minor six, and minor seven. Yeah, so I have this exercise that I I show some, some students sometimes, it's just like That's it. So you can hold that down. And I'll do this. Prince was huge for me, man. So it's like it's like fitting in kind of what he did, kind of than what Charlie Hunter was doing with the thumb and stuff, and it all just sort of and Stevie so Wonder chords. Sure, yeah, everybody yes. should listen to Stevie Wonder. Well, all yeah, the time, absolutely. Actually. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely. So we moved awesome. more to a pick there for a second. We did. But if you were yeah. going to do that with your fingers, oh, like okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all right. <laughs> So now everything is, and I'm kind of actually tearing up the <laughs> the cuticle a little bit here. Right. right? Save it's it all for tonight. Nah, it's all in the name of fun, man. <laughs> I, I ain't bleeding. We ain't rocking. No. Um, so so now everything is just focused really on the D string. But it's the same concept. With the so it's really like. So it's it's thumb, wow. and I do I use my middle finger for this. The nail on my middle. Finger. But show me that thumb thing really slow. So, like, so yeah, I gotta find one. Hold on. <laughs> it's like one, two, three, four. So the the the, the downbeat is gonna be it's super specific, but it's almost like a combination of the flesh of the thumb and the nail on my middle finger. So you get that. Oh, they're actually hitting the string around the same time. Your finger, yeah. your finger and the thumb. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So there's a little bit of nail in there and a little bit of thumb. Okay. So it's actually like you're using the nail and the thumb and you're doing the downstroke with yes, that? Yes, Oh, my. There's always more to learn on the guitar, isn't there? <laughs> it's like, that's like an instrument so I don't know how to figure this out. <laughs> so, yeah. So <laughs> it gets a little, it, get, it can get a little hairy. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. We'll do, we'll do now, that later. You, want, well, Pete, you, can, <laughs> what you can do is you can. It's a little. It's actually a little harder to to hit the G string again with your thumb. So if you want to put a pause in the phrase and then hit the G string with your middle finger, it would be like this. It's actually a little funkier that way, I think. Yeah. Because then you're kind of relying more on the left hand, which is also going to be muting a whole bunch, right? Man, that was cool. Jackson bass lick squiggle bass squiggle um, so yeah I just played with a lot of drummers growing up w- without bass players I guess <laughs> or something but now I get to play with a really great bass player amazing awesome man so, well, yeah. so thank you oh, so sucks. much for I got a lot over. to work on now yeah. hey, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. Going to go and practice oh my god <laughs> anyway um, thanks so much for joining us well you want to yeah. Do we need to do an outro? No, no, I, I just got back from Japan. I yeah, right. Yeah. I'm you trying to coffee. talk you yeah, into the coffee. No, that was amazing. Uh, that was amazing. So much. Thank I, mean, you I seriously so much feel like I'm... Guys, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go home, hit the metronome, and like, yeah. try and uh, throw the pick away for about a month and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. no. uh, anyway, thanks, Mark. Have a great gig tonight. Have a Thank great you, tour. Fellas. And make, keep making more videos for us to enjoy please we'll do yeah Thanks, it's inspiring guys. inspiring yeah. and uh, yeah. we'll put all the uh, Mark's links you know and yeah. everything social okay. media yeah. and all that stuff in yeah. the description below so you can check it out there and uh, uh, please check them out YouTube Instagram uh, if you haven't seen his Instagram videos they're amazing I'll they are amazing yeah. uh, thanks so much we'll see you real soon on Tim and Pete's Guitar Show see you soon alright bye bye